wealth is wealth and fame Great big ears and a big long name But our Mark Henry takes the spot You see here we're right along the side of the Fraser River We'll be approaching the jail further up as we approach Port Woodland. So we'll uh, check back in with you then. It's Jason Wilcox signing out. Hi, it's Mark Emery calling from North Fraser pre-trial. And today is Friday, November 6th, and I'm hoping to get bail on Monday. Uh, my bail application okay. is going to be presented by my lawyer, Kirk Tussaud. Welcome back, this is Jason Wilcox, Cannabis in Canada, with another episode. This one, unfortunately, I'd like to be it under better circumstances, but our dear friend Mr. Emery, as you've seen, we've shown pictures as we've come in to go to the jail. We've now just exited the jail, and we're at kind of ground zero, kind of the camp out. And we've got Dylan here with us, we've got Corey and Krista, who are, uh, you know, they're not leaving, they're here to stay. They, they have planted themselves here, and they're not leaving until Mr. Emery is free. Uh, we still encourage all to contact the numbers that are posted below and, uh, and to certainly give a shout out to that. Um, this is a free man coming into it. Mark will be coming through um, via speakerphone and we'll be able to, uh, to bring that to you and you'll be able to hear from the coast as well if you have it. Uh, Mark's holding up well, sounding intelligent as ever, uh, as strong as ever and I think the one mistake they made was giving them too much time to think. You know, that's the mistake that they're making. Because now that he's had 17 days to settle in, he says he's doing a little better. The hardest part, of course, is the food. You know, but you know, the food sucks for anybody. And uh, other than that, he's looking great. I think this is phenomenal. He's got his team together. I mean, people are here. We're rallying around him for support. I mean, uh, apparently there's there's going to be a Friday night uh, thing that we're going to pick up on as well. Taking our time with bringing this out because we want to make sure we get Mark's message out. And this is, uh, we're just being the best in this case. Uh, this is Jason Wilcox. Yeah, I'm just chop it up anyway. Yeah. I'm going to let it out of here. Okay. Okay, so what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, the founding of this. So. Yeah. So what happened was me and this other lady were talking on the first, when we were having the first, like, rally before the we were going to be here every day. And we were talking about just doing it 24-7 and camping out because a lot of us take the bus and getting here from Vancouver sucks. So we chatted and then we went and talked to uh, the higher powers and said, you know, hey, we want to turn this into a 24-hour thing and camp out. <coughs> and we were like, fuck, well, okay, sure. It started with one tank. Yeah. One you tank. Guys, you guys got to go on. And we, for the first three or four, maybe even five days, every day we'd add a new tent. Or, and acquired like new stuff. Yeah. People would come by, drop off food, we, supplies, we got, we got a bond from, a, from some random guy I came heard by. I you guys even got a generator potentially going on one, or we're thinking about a generator. We're, we're thinking we're about trying a generator, to get a generator getting a vaporizer down here yeah. and educating people who okay. come by. We do our best to educate everyone who comes by with bong hits, edibles. Um, I had a fellow here earlier today. Minister. We try and focus on freeing Mark. I mean, that is our main goal, but I mean, there's so many other aspects that stem off from that that it just kind of cannot be talked about at the same time, you know? So, yeah, but we try and focus on mainly freeing Mark. I as long as we get people to free the justice, to call the justice minister, after that, we get them high, we get them relaxed, we educate them about baked goods, we refer them to the dispensary, the Vancouver Seed Bank, the BCMP, and... Hope they follow our lead. Fabulous. No, absolutely. That's what we need. I mean, that is true activism. Again, for everybody out there, you know, there's a lot of people, and I like to say there's armchair activists and then there's activists because at one point you have to put the act back into activism. And that's where you actually get out and do something. And, and, and that's what it comes to do here. And, uh, and it inspires us and it inspires them. We drive by and honk the horns in support of what we're doing. I mean, we're talking about a Canadian citizen who's not a victim of this crime and uh, certainly doesn't even deserve the time, let alone to be extradited out of his homeland to some foreign freaking country uh, with some absurd cannabis laws. Uh, enough said on that. We'll just continue on with... Uh, okay, so we got Tennessee that kind of built up here. Yeah, every day we added something new. Today I had a gentleman come by who, before a few weeks ago, when shit really hit the fan for Mark. 
he just he believed all the bullshit that everybody he had been fed his entire life about it being a horrible drug and being a gateway to all the hard drugs and it'll destroy your life and then when everything went down with Mark he started thinking and started looking up on the internet and educating himself and realizing that it's not what they said it is. He himself has never smoked cannabis, but he's told me that, uh, while we were chatting today, that he uh, suffers from insomnia, his mother suffers from um, really bad migraines, and I told them, I told them, you know, if you guys don't want to actually smoke a joint, you know, you can eat a cookie or a brownie. They have creams to help with muscle aches and headaches. They have, you know, if you don't want to smoke the weed, you can vaporize it. Excellent. And, so educate and medicate. Yeah, and, and I actually, get, because we have been given some baked goods, I said to him, here's a cookie, take this home, try it, you know, eat it half an hour to an hour before you're going to go to sleep. Try eating half of it. If you're still, you know, can't go to sleep, eat the other half of it, and you should have no problem sleeping. And I told him, if that helps you, here's the paperwork for a medicinal cannabis dispensary where you can get these edibles and, you know, hashish and, you know, everything you, everything need, every you basic need. need for medicinal use. And, you know, and they can help you find what will work to help you and he was really quite shocked and I told him you know if you want educate yourself some more I told him to pick up the emperor wears no clothes told him it's an excellent read that's, to yes, educate that's, yourself that's one, of, that's one of the bibles I have I have three bibles and that would certainly be one of George Chavant's um, in the world the world bible and then a more than that yes and but yes, absolutely, one of the classics and one of the best. Yeah, I had another fellow today come up, and he took, he was on the stance of he was completely against marijuana. Even though he knew that it could be used as medicine and could be used as this, and he's like, well, if you legalize it, won't everybody just start doing the harder drugs? Isn't that why everybody smokes pot? Because it's illegal? And I smoke it, and I said, no, I smoke it medicinally. I don't smoke it because it's illegal. I smoke it because it helps me medicinal. And he's telling me that he has a 10-year-old son. And I looked at him and I said, what if in 10, you know, 5, 10 years, your son is smoking a joint and he gets arrested? That's going to tear your family apart. And it doesn't mean that he's going to...